On this episode of How an Airstream Works, we're going to be talking about brakes, suspension, and tires, and everything that makes this thing move and stop down the road. Trailer brakes are super important. Sometimes small trailers, like something you'd take the lawn clippings in or go to the dump with, are small enough that they don't need their own dedicated brakes. The tow vehicle is strong enough that its brakes can handle the extra weight of the trailer. With a big travel trailer or an RV, it's heavy enough that it needs its own brakes. So let's talk about some of those safety features. First off is our emergency brake for the trailer. So what happens is you connect this to the bumper of your truck. If your trailer were ever to break away, this cable being tied to your truck would pull out like this and it would snap this emergency brake out. Now the brakes are locked on. The trailer is not going anywhere. So if you're flying down the freeway and it disconnects, it will stop itself instead of turning into a projectile to kill a family or a bus full of school children. Now you never want to leave that out because it's actually applying voltage from the batteries to the brakes. So don't leave that out for a long period of time. I just wanted to illustrate that for you. So that is our emergency brake for the trailer. Let's go take a look at the regular brakes. Each axle of this trailer has a drum brake on it. A little bit hard to see here. If you think about it, the trailer doesn't have a brake pedal. So how does it know when to apply those brakes? Let me show you. Now our trailers don't have brake pedals, but our tow vehicles sure do. We kind of have two brake pedals. We've got the regular one, and then your trailer brake has a control on it as well. This acts like a brake pedal just for the trailer. Now, not every vehicle has a trailer brake controller. A Toyota Prius, for example, does not come with one because nobody tows with their Prius, at least not enough to need a brake controller. So, if you get a truck that's rated to tow and it's, I would guess, like 2005 or newer, there's a good chance it has a built-in trailer brake controller. In the case of our old van, it was a 1998 and it did not have one. You can buy aftermarket trailer brake controllers and they're fantastic if you get the good ones and they're awful if you get the bad ones. I'm not going to go into what makes it good or bad right now, but we will link uh, a link to our favorite. Our favorite is made by Tashanka and I it's like 200 bucks for their best one. Totally worth it, especially when you're hauling your house behind you. So what it does is it has an accelerometer in it. So when it feels that the car is slowing down, it applies electrical signal to your seven pin in the back. So here is our seven pin trailer connector. And right here you can see maybe it says electric brakes. That pin right there controls your electric brakes on your trailer. If you just have a four pin connector like that, it's just your lights. It does not break for your trailer. That's why we have the seven pins. So the brake controller on the truck will transmit the signal through this wire to the braking box, to the brain inside the trailer. That way the trailer knows how hard to apply each brake. The more voltage is applied, the harder the brakes grab. So it's really important to set your trailer brake controller correctly on your truck so that when you apply the brakes of the truck and the gyroscope feels that and it sends that pulse down here, it's an accurate pulse. With that, the trailer can totally stop itself so you don't overheat your truck's brakes. That way your tow vehicle drives just like normal whether it's towing or not and you're not cooking those brakes. Basically, an Airstream is just a box on wheels that you drag around behind you. It's pretty simple. That being said, the axles are a very interesting feature, the way they use these torsion axles. I'm going to put a link to Dexter's explanation of how these axles work because they could explain it far better than I could. So these axles operate independently. If I hit a bump just on that wheel, that's the only wheel that's going to move. We've also installed dynamic wheel balancers on our Airstream, and I recommend everybody does that. Wheels can pick up vibrations and movement, and that'll translate to the trailer, and the trailer can often amplify these vibrations. And because these are all riveted together, a trailer with a poorly balanced tire will start popping rivets and slowly start falling apart. So having properly balanced tires is extremely important. Let's talk a little bit more about the tires. Most trailers come with trailer tires, and trailer tires are usually rated to about 55 miles an hour. 
a lot of people don't realize that. They go and they pick up their trailer and they hook it up to their huge Dodge that can do 100 miles an hour down the freeway. They tow it at 75, 80, and then their tire explodes on their brand new tire and they wonder why. Well, some trailer tires are not rated for the speeds and loads that truck tires are. For that reason, we always go overkill on our tires. These are truck rated tires. These are rated to, oh, let's see, how many miles per hour? I need to look it up. I think it's close to 92 or something like that. We pick really sturdy tires because they're less likely to flat and they can handle slightly higher speeds. Now you shouldn't be racing down the freeway anyway towing your trailer, but there are places across the country where the speed limit is as high as 80, 85 miles an hour, and so you might want to get this above the 65 mile an hour limit that some trailer tires have. Another thing you should check annually are your trailer's hub bearings. I would get those inspected by a certified mechanic. They will repack the bearings, check the brake tolerances, and that's just a good preventive maintenance thing to do every year on your trailer. We're big fans of getting the trailers lifted up as high as possible to get them out of the way of rocks and logs and dips in the road and everything like that. Use your judgment whether you think it would be good to lift your trailer or not, but if you do want to, I'll put some links up in this card up here that show our thoughts and our process of lifting our trailers. And here are a few final tips on towing and braking. A lot of people when they drive and they see a stop sign coming, they brake a little, a little, a little, a little, more, 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 a lot. And it's like a sine wave where the brakes are applied more, 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 more. That is a very dangerous way to drive a car and an even more dangerous way to drive a trailer. You want to either have a linear braking pattern where it's smooth all the way through until you stop or even brake heavy on the onset and then let off a little bit more. So, I mean, if a child ran out or a dog ran out and you're doing that progressive braking where it gets sharper and sharper and sharper, you won't have the control to be able to apply more because you're already applying almost all of it. So the same thing happens with the trailers. And it's not a very smooth ride and it'll get herky-jerky and it'll pull on the ball and you'll feel it on your toe rig and that sort of thing. Always ha be ready to reach down to your emergency brake controller and hit that if you're worried you need additional braking power from your trailer brakes or anything like that as well. And finally, um, a lot of people don't know this unless they've raced cars or motorcycles or bicycles or something like that. But let's pretend your tires have 10 traction units and you go around a corner. Well, we've all heard cars that go around corners too fast and the tires start squealing. That means they are reaching that 10 units of grip and there's grip starting to slide and it's starting to go. Well, the same thing happens with cars and trailers. When we go around corners, we want all of our grip for that corner. If we're braking and cornering, we are sacrificing some of the cornering grip for braking grip. Does that make sense? You only have 10 units of traction. What do you want? Five on braking and five on cornering? If that's the case, you're really sacrificing both. So the tip is to do your braking before the corner. Slow down, let off the brakes through the corner, then you get all 10 levels of grip back for the corner. Try not to corner while braking if you can. Brake first, anticipate the corner, coast through it, and then accelerate out. Those are my tips for safe braking and towing with your trailer. If you learned something from this video and you benefited and it will save you money down the road, consider supporting us on Patreon.com. For three bucks a month, you can make a big impact to us to help us be able to keep making more videos like this.